Well, we have a friend with us uh, uh, tonight that I want to uh, introduce to you, and she mentioned the, the, the pastor already mentioned his name. We have uh, Roy Fields with us tonight, and he's coming through, and we're getting to know them, and I want to have him wherever he is. Come on up, Roy. We're going to visit with him just for a minute. And I could have you sit down, but you, you know you're going to want to stand back up in just a minute anyway because I'm sending him to the piano in just a minute. This is, come on over here, Roy. This is Roy Fields, and we have been having a great time talking about revival. And in some ways, uh, believe it or not, this is our first meeting together. We've talked on the phone, but actually, in some ways, we go way back yeah. through the revival times. How did you get... Well, well, how did you get in touch? I don't know how you found out who I was years ago in revival, but how did it strike you? Well, my parents, Jerry and Lila Hart, lived in upstate New York, and they got a film uh, interview of you and Kathy of the Smith and Outpouring okay. back in 1996 and showed that video to me, and we saw your testimony when you just began to weep and say that you were hungry for God and you didn't care about if you preached another sermon, and it just hit us. And my parents were hungry for revival. We went to Brownsville like you did in 1996. Yep. And we received something when we went. I can't explain it. But my parents ended up having revival in their basement. Like 150 people packing out in the basement every night. People traveling down and just spread like wildfire. And uh, I was touched in revival in Brownsville. I was a broken person. I, I was an 18-year-old kid that just was tired of church tired of playing the thing. I wanted to meet the God that everybody was talking about. And uh, I just was tired of religion. I was, even at 18, I was tired of religion. And if God didn't touch me, I was done with my life. And when he touched me, it just changed. I, I, my, my, my whole body caught on fire. I don't know how else to explain it, except all of a sudden I knew that God loved me and I knew that he called me. And you know, I don't know if you remember me telling you this, but I, I stood in Brownsville at 18 years of age right in front of Lendl Cooley's keyboard, and I prayed a prayer. Listen, y'all, I prayed a prayer. Those of you that are watching, prayer works. And I said, Lord, if you'll put that anointing on my life that's on Lendl, I'll use it for your glory. And I remember just falling out under the power of God, and <clears throat> 10 years later, I found myself in Lakeland, Florida, 2008 behind the keyboard, people watching from around the world. I looked down and Lendl Cooley was standing right there in the worship service and God says, do you remember that prayer you prayed yeah, right. in 1998? He goes, I'm a God that answers prayer. Yep. <laughs> and that should be great encouragement for you here and you watching at home because, you know, you're, some of you at home or some of you standing here, you were where we were. Now it's the other way around. Someday it could be flipped around and you, we could be watching you someday. But you really, I think both Roy, Kathy, Roy, we would all agree, the difference between us though, when God was trying to do something in our lives, we gave ourselves fully to it. Yeah. We didn't mess around. We didn't try to just stick our toe into the water. We knew, we'd been waiting our whole lives and if God would do it, we were ready to take that step. And I think if you hesitate, that moment of hesitation is where it separates sort of the men from the boys kind of thing. It's, well, it's all or nothing. Yeah. It's all or nothing. We didn't go down to try to get something to start our church or start, our, start anything. Yeah. We as people were tired of sitting in the pews and not seeing the power of God. Yep. And everybody talking about stories, how God can heal one day. We were like, this is bogus. Either this word works or it doesn't. Either God is real or it's not. Yep. And I tell you, he's real. I said, he's real. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Now we gotta tell, yeah, so, you know, come on, I said the other day a phrase, I said, it's time to live the life. You know, it's time to live it. Well, we gotta talk a minute here, something very special that's happening in Wales. And actually, when uh, Roy and I began to visit, he wasn't in Wales, and then something, he got an invitation, so we said, okay, fly to Wales and do some services, and then hopefully you can get on a plane and fly to Kansas City and come and do this and be our friend and all that, and then he's gonna go back to, to Wales. But in the meantime, through just this little conversation, um, some extra special stuff has been going on in Wales and I think the friends should be it should hear it but they should also be encouraged because every place has a hopeless look to it until God shows up and I'm sure Wales is the same way what's going on in Wales well just to quickly make this short 1904 the Welsh revival broke out Evan Roberts a man 
who was hungry for God said, I want to see whales shaken. And so he's the guy that went down to the basement of Mariah Chapel and prayed. And two weeks later, the place was packed out. The city shut down. The pubs emptied. There was no more crime in the city. And so whales lived on that for 100 years now. But it was something that happened in 1904. When we came, we were scheduled for four days to do a Born to Worship tour where I was going to teach on music and just do worship every night. Well, the place packed out the first night. It kept packing out. And by the last night, the fourth night, people were coming. They weren't leaving the, the place until one in the morning. There were bodies all over the place. Power of God was hitting people. They were falling out. And I wouldn't even touch in their heads or nothing. God was just touching them. And so I looked at the pastor. I said, you want to go another night? And he goes, sure. I says, well, I have to rebook all my, yeah. you know, tickets. It's, it's not cheap. It takes money, honey, bread, Fred, and dojo to do the ministry. Yeah. And uh, so I said, we're willing to do it because my wife and I are sold out for that. I mean, we just, we love you guys because you're sold out to the call. And that's how we are. We've taken our wife and kids on the road. So we, we abandoned everything to, to, to see revival happen. And uh, they said, let's go another night. Well, it turned into eight nights. And eight nights turn into 16 nights. And 16 nights turn into a month. And what happened is we were testing the waters a little bit. There were, there were pastors coming from all over. One night on a Saturday night, in the 10th night, at about 12 midnight, I said to the crowd, I says, I want one representative from every church that's represented here tonight. And they came down in like a herd. And I said, whoa, whoa, just one, just one. And they kept coming. I says, okay, just one. And I said it like several times. They come down to the stage and they lined out the whole altar area right here. And I started giving the mic to them and they were naming off their churches. 56 churches were represented. And a pastor that everybody knew from 30 years past. By the way, those of you that are watching from Wales, we love yeah, you. Yeah, they're watching from Wales right now. Will you say hi to them from Wales? Hey! Will you? hey! Come on. Because they're watching right now. Some of them are staying late. They're staying up to 3 yeah. in the morning to watch this. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I remember, I remember the, uh, after we were 10 days into it and we had 56 churches, people, people were coming from all over. Pastors were coming from all over. And this pastor that's well-known, his name's Dennis Phillips in the Elam, Elam denomination. And he got up, grabbed the microphone, and I said, would you just share with people? Because somebody said, this, Dennis Phillips is here or whatever. So he grabs the microphone and everybody knows this guy in Wales. He's a highly respected man who loves God, has preached revival. The Jeffrey brothers came through Wales and Evan Roberts and everything. And he grabs the microphone and he says, listen, I want everybody to listen to me. He says, I was here last night. And he points at the place he sat. You know how you can remember the place that you sure. got touched by yeah, the presence yeah. of God? He turns, he says, I sat right up there Wednesday night. He says, I'm gonna tell you right now, I've been preaching for 30 years all over this country and I've been in this church. I've never felt the presence of God like I did Wednesday night. He goes, this is a move of God. Just like that. And all these other pastors started coming on board. Now we're taking it to other cities. And so far, I mean, I've got statistics for you. In the UK alone, 290 cities and towns have logged on to watch our broadcast from Wales. Come on, five over, <clears throat> no exaggeration, no exaggeration. There were 5,000 people we've had come through the doors so far. And I, those are real numbers because right. pastors count heads, evangelists right. count feet. Right. So you know how that works. And, uh, and we have seen, <laughs> just being honest with you, because <laughs> I've lied before. Um, <laughs> I'm just being honest. Anyways. And so now, now there has been uh, close to 200 decisions for Christ, and these guys are coming in and getting righteously saved, and now the pastors are plugging them in and getting them into the body, and they're starting to go for revival. They're winning people on the streets. They're praying for people. People are getting healed. They're coming to the meetings, and, and it's just been incredible. I can't even explain what's going on. This has not happened since, I'm just gonna be bold and say it. This has not happened since 1904. Nobody has come through and just hung out. And we got an apartment in Cardiff. We're actually there. My children and my wife, I flew them. I flew my children, my nanny in. And, and we have an apartment there in Wales. And God is pouring out on this city, guys. 
we are getting phone call after phone call. I'm not making this up. We get phone call after phone call after phone call. Can, he, can, can you come to our church, please? Can you come to our church? So we've taken it out. So the, we're no longer just coming to one church. We're taking it to all these churches. And, and I got a great testimony, and I'll end right here. <laughs> I know it's hard for me. Um, there is this lady that was coming to the meetings, and she used to be a prostitute. She, got, she gave her life to Christ a year and a half ago, something like that. And she, you have to walk by a bar, or as they call it, a pub, to get into the doors of the church. The church and the pub are right next to each other. And every day, every night to the meeting, she would walk by. And the Lord just grabbed a hold of her. He says, if you don't go in and grab one of those guys and tell them that Jesus loves them, they're gonna go to hell. If you don't get the gospel to them, she goes in, grabs two guys and says, I've gotta ask you a question. Of course, she's a woman. They turn around and say, okay. And she says, do you know what would happen to you if you died right now? And the one guy says, I don't know. The other guy says, I'd probably go to hell. And she grabs this, I mean, just raw Christian faith, okay? Nobody taught her how to do this stuff. We surely didn't change it. We don't teach people going to, you know, grab people. And so she walks in and she grabs the two guys, pulls them out of the bar, walks them right out the door into the, ch the church doors, brings them in, they come in the service, the worship's going and every night, it's like three hours of worship a night. It's like 12 a.m. in the morning, people are getting out of here. And, and he comes to the altar and they both get down on the floor and the one starts confessing to all the stuff he's been doing in his life and he wants to get right with God. The other guy asks Christ to come into his heart. His life changes in front of our eyes and he comes back to the next meeting and now he's starting to come to meetings. So this is... You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. starting to spread now, and it's just. Well, that's uh, why people here, people there, wherever you are around the world, there's people in all kinds of countries, over 200 countries, that you could have be, this be happening to you. Somebody's got to be a catalyst. Somebody's got to be praying. Somebody's got to be open. Somebody's got to be hungry. You know, God always uses a somebody. That's the way it works. Could be you.